Thanks so much. Dr. Greg Mills heads the Johannesburg-based Brenthurst Foundation, which is dedicated to strengthening Africa's economic performance. From 1996 to 2005, he served as the National Director of the South African Institute of International Affairs. He has lectured at universities and institutions in Africa and abroad, from the Pentagon to the Peruvian and Chilean Naval Staff Colleges. He is on the visiting staff of the NATO Higher Defense College in Rome and is a fellow of the London-based Royal Society of the Arts. Among Dr. Mill's books is Poverty to Prosperity, Globalization, Good Governance, and African Recovery, which he co-wrote with Jeffrey Herbst. His publication and journal credits include the International Herald Tribune, the New York Times, Time Magazine, the Sydney Morning Herald, and the Financial Times. As a fellow Africanist and grandson of a South African Grand Prix driver, D Dr. Mills is the perfect person to officially welcome Jeff Herbst to Colgate's driver's seat. <laughs> President Herbst, uh, Dr. Sharon Polanski, Mrs. Rose Herbst and me other members of the Herbst family, members of the Colgate Board of Trustees, I hope I have that correct, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, there's a wonderful saying in East Africa when you can't get all the names right that you just simply add all protocols I hope observed. <laughs> On our arrival this Friday at the Colgate Inn in Hamilton, we were given a maroon umbrella this was fitting of my role this memorable weekend, and not only because of the vagaries of the northern autumn, although I believe that most days apparently in Colgate, at least Sharon has been told, are like today. <laughs> <clears throat> in the Congo, a little under two years ago, Jeffrey and I found ourselves stuck at night in the driving rain between that country's border with Zambia, trying to negotiate our entry into the latter after the border's closing hours having spent the day with the governor of Katanga, a product himself of a liaison between a Jewish trader and a local Katangese woman who not only sported a Torah on his desk, but was dressed in a denim suit. Some things only in the Congo. <laughs> For those who have visited that border at a place called Kasumbaleza, it is a place where Dante's Inferno meets Mad Max on steroids. On the one side was the uncharted and lawlessness territory of the Congo, where governance is subjective at best. On the other, three kilometers of trucks, three abreast, which can be stuck there up to five weeks, clearing customs, followed by 150 kilometers of potholes and unlit roads, before at least we were to reach our guest house in Kitwe. We were quite literally marooned in the middle of nowhere. This is a story that ended well, however, though it involved negotiations with avarice immigration officials that Henry Kissinger would have been proud of, and the odd flat tire and bent rim on our car journey homewards. But the bit I remember the most is that while we were inside the Zambian customs facility pleading our case, or in fact I should say Jeffrey's case, because they were prepared to let me in but not him, because I was a South African and he not a rich American, someone stole, someone stole our umbrella, which lay on the counter quite literally, in front of our noses. You have to be quick-witted to survive in the Congo. Hence the connection between the umbrellas, the maroon umbrellas of Colgate, and the umbrellas of the Congo. I have known Professor Jeffrey Herbst for little over 23 years, since we first met in Chicago at the African Studies Association's annual conference. Then, as now, I was impressed by his scholarship and originality and clarity of thought illustrating what I've always believed to be the case. The sign of a great mind is to explain complex problems in a clear and succinct manner, just as the opposite, unfortunately, also holds true with some other colleagues. Over the ensuing nearly quarter of a century, we have worked closely together, conducted field work in some of the most difficult spots around the world, including Somalia and the Congo, and produced a number of collaborative articles and books. Jeff's great contribution to African studies is, I would boldly venture, threefold. The first is in his empirical studies on structural adjustment in Ghana and his PhD research on Zimbabwe, 
which remained seminal works two decades on. This reflects the fact that, unlike many researchers, he actually lived and worked in these places, that he was able to get under their skin and they, to an extent, under his, is evident in the depth of his analysis. Little wonder, then, that President John Kufour of Ghana sent this note to me upon learning of Jeffrey's new position. I quote, I am delighted to learn of Jeffrey Herbst's appointment as the 16th president of Colgate University. His book on Ghana remains a key text in our economic and political development. But he has been more than just a scholar of Africa. His work has successfully straddled the gap between academic and policy making. Sorry, academia and policy making. While grounded in field work, his writings have had strategic impact. We look forward, said the president, to many years of his continued engagement with our continent and wish him every success in his new role. And his role too in Zimbabwe is still well remembered. Its finance minister, a man called Tendai Beatty, is a man who has recently been responsible for stabilizing Zimbabwe's economy in the face of overwhelming problems and odds, not least of which includes a rather recalcitrant government partner. He says of your new president, Professor Jeffrey Herbst is one of the great scholars of Africa in the United States. Having specialized in Africa during his studies at Yale and nearly two decades at Princeton. May I congratulate him on his appointment as president of Colgate University. We look forward to many more years of his contribution to academia and to Africa. May he continue to be a source of specialist research and a conduit to US scholarship on Africa for Zimbabwe. Jeffrey's second great contribution is that he is the first to, has been the first to advance this past decade what has subsequently become common cause amongst us Africanists, the notion of state differentiation. That Africa, in other words, is not just and should thus not be considered one thing, but rather that there is a classification of states ranging from big to small, fragile to strong, mineral rich to landlocked. These different types pose different challenges to development specialists and demand more, far more nuanced sets of policies which most hitherto saw to be the case. With regard to Jeffrey's third contribution, it is most appropriate that the theme of this inauguration is focused on a sense of place. Over the years of our association, I have developed my understanding of African politics to the point that I believe the principal challenge to African prosperity is, the, is, is, is in the choices that leaders have and continue to make. This has led to a book I've just published on this topic called provocatively, Why Africa is Poor. But Jeff, as ever, is several steps ahead of me. The reasons why African leaders have made poor choices is the subject of his groundbreaking work on states and power in Africa. Those of you who have traveled in Africa will know, at least from your view out of the aircraft window, how few people there seem to be down there to be somewhat more exact, about five times less than the density of Europe, for example. Population concentrations create certain disciplines of governance, including the raising of armies and taxes. Coupled with an African moratorium on the discussion about its colonial borders, African leadership has thus not been encouraged to adhere to these disciplines and to extend governance to the edge of these frontiers. This shared concern between us on state building has led us to write recently in foreign policy about the problems of governance in the Congo, that vast territory at the heart of Africa. Like Professor Herbst's earlier thought-provoking writings on Somalia, our assertion recently that there, quote, is no Congo, excited a rather large number in the Congolese diaspora who mostly seem to be desperate to prove that there is. For a while, we were famous they're probably in entirely the wrong circles and in the wrong way that our wives would have hoped for at least once upon a time. <laughs> this work has developed to the point that we have recently completed a study on fault lines in societies, why it is that some countries fracture around political, religious, ethnic, and other divisions, and perhaps more importantly, why some do not. This again was Jeff's idea, maintaining his status as a forward-thinking academic one who is primarily interested in policy matters which have application to real life situations. Indeed, a lot of the work that we have done together at the Brenthurst Foundation, where I work and where Jeff sits on the board, 
has indeed involved identifying and implementing best practice examples from around the world. General Sir David Richards, the Chief of the British Armed Forces, who's equivalent to the chi Chairman of the Joint St uh, Chiefs of Staff of the United States, and the last non-American commander of ISAF in Afghanistan back in 2007, has written of Jeffrey, I quote, I first met Jeffrey Herbst at Swalu Kalahari Reserve in 2003 at a dialogue on peace support operations. I was immediately impressed by the depth and accessibility of his scholarship and the practical solutions that he offered. I look forward to continue to engage with him as president of Colgate University, a post which is richly deserved and one he will, I have every confidence, excel. He does assure me that he's not planning any invasions here, however. <laughs> Jeffrey is one then who's, not inter who's interested in academia, not for academia's sake, but for the solutions that learning and knowledge offer to our everyday and to our future challenges. He is an internationalist steeped in local political and resource realities. As Ambassador Mark Bellamy, the director of the African St Center for Strategic Studies in Washington has said, Jeff's commanding scholarship has earned the respect not only of his academic peers, but also of policymakers and practitioners who value and regard Jeff's insights and judgment to a degree that is, in my experience, unmatched in this field. Even as he assumes new important responsibilities at Colgate, the ambassador writes, his many admirers in and around Washington are hoping that he will continue his path-breaking and authoritative work on African issues. This impact is potentially beyond just the US or Africa, in case you see me as too parochial for a moment. Dr. Juan Carlos Echeverri, the Minister of Finance of Colombia, also wrote to me upon hearing of Jeffrey's appointment. He says, I have worked extensively with Professor Jeffrey Herbst in helping to develop policy solutions in a number of African countries. I would like to add my personal congratulations to the, to the many he, he has received on his appointment as the President of Colgate. I look forward to continuing to work with him in the future when hopefully we will be able to convince him to visit us in Colombia. Ladies and gentlemen, for those who know me, it is testament to Jeff's character that in 23 years never a crossword has pa passed between us. This is remarkable not only given my personality, <laughs> but especially in academic environments where to cite C.P. Snow, the struggles are sometimes so bitter because the stakes are so low. Our personal friendship, to, friendship has blossomed into a friendship too between our families and Janet and I are honored that Je Jeffrey is the godfather to our youngest child. Indeed, Colgate is lucky to have not only such a great scholar as its new president, but also one of such character and integrity, someone who's always willing to give others the benefit of the doubt. As my opening anecdote from the Congo would indicate, we have shared many adventures together. We have walked the streets of Antananarivo in Madagascar on our mobile phones, trying to sell our houses on our respective continents between jobs. That may be a story for a different time, not least one about how the world is perhaps not yet perfectly flat. But the one anecdote that stands out the most in my mind was in Uganda, where we had gone to do some research on the state of that country's infrastructure, and where on our arrival at Kampala Airport, Jeff discovered that his new running shoes had been stolen from his bag at the airport. His comment at the time was that the thief had thoughtfully left his own shoes behind in Jeff's bag. <laughs> I did not have the heart to tell him that the man could not be seen walking through the airport, spare shoes in hand. As I've said, this is a man who always sees the best side in people. His family has been the pillar behind Jeff in encouraging his career and allowing him, from my vantage, to go on such madcap trips. The way Matthew, Spencer, and Alana have grown up is also testament to Jeffrey and Sharon's parenting and their set of values. Colgate, you are extremely lucky to have Jeffrey Herbst as your 16th president. From what I've seen, and